We're in the Sunshine Coast hinterland of Australia looking for probably the weirdest frog you've never heard of, the southern gastric brooding frog. It's got a very strange name because it's got a very strange strategy for raising its young. Females of this species used to eat their own eggs. Those eggs would then produce a chemical signal to the stomach, telling it to stop producing digestive acids, essentially turning it into a uterus. There, they would develop into tadpoles and then into baby frogs, and the female would then vomit them up when they're ready to go out into the world. The reason we're looking for this species is it actually went missing in the very early 80s, and sadly now it's believed to be extinct. There are so many unknowns in the world's wild places. Uh, many species could be declared extinct prematurely just because they've become a little bit more rare, a bit more difficult to detect, or they live in a place that's difficult for humans to access and search for them. Nearly every year, species that we believed were extinct are being rediscovered, and none more so than frogs. It's my hope that here in these remote rainforests where there are hidden gorges and difficult to access creeks, there might be a population of the southern gastric brooding frog just hanging on to survival. This species is a symbol of modern extinction in Australia, so other people have gone looking for it before, but not quite the way that we are. We have been doing traditional surveys, which for frogs is usually walking up a creek at night and listening and looking for the frog itself. But we're also doing something new, and that's using environmental DNA. All animals leave DNA traces of themselves everywhere they go. It's how forensic scientists can catch criminals, but it's also how we can detect rare species without necessarily seeing them ourselves. We've been taking samples from water, air, and even frogs' parasites in the hope to forensically detect this missing species. There are these flies called frog-biting flies. They're much like mosquitoes in that females need a blood meal to reproduce. But unlike most mosquitoes, they get that blood meal specifically from frogs, and they find frogs in a pretty cool and surprising way. They listen for them. Frog-biting flies follow the sound of calling male frogs to get the blood they need, and that makes them really easy to collect. All we have to do is set up fly traps in the forest with a speaker broadcasting frog calls, and that attracts frog biting flies from throughout the forest, including flies that have potentially fed on the rare frog species that we are looking for. Once we have those flies, we can take them into the lab and extract the frog DNA from the blood they have in their bellies and forensically detect frogs, including rare frogs, frogs that we might not necessarily have seen or heard during our time in the field. Essentially, these frog biting flies are way better at finding frogs than we are, so why not add them to the team? It's my hope that some of the frog biting flies we've been collecting here have been feeding on the southern gastric brooding frog and we'll get a detection for that species and find out that it's still here.